Welcome to this Nourish Cookery class brought to you by me, Jade Bradley. Today I will be showing you how to make a really delicious herby pesto. All you food for thought growers might recognize this recipe from your booklet. I am going to use some homegrown basil for this recipe. However, please feel free to use any fresh herbs that you may have grown at home or you may be able to get from a local supplier. Coriander, dill, fennel, basil, parsley and rocket all work really well for this recipe. I am going to use a pestle and mortar to make this recipe. However, if you don't have one, please feel free to use a rolling pan to bash up all the ingredients. You could even chop them up really finely or if you've got a blender, you can use this to blitz up all the ingredients for the pesto. I will include some yummy serving suggestions for the pesto at the end of the video, including a delicious roasted courgette and pesto pasta, and also using the pesto to spread on some delicious crusty bread. The ingredients that I will be using for this pesto include some lovely fresh basil. Like I said, you can use any fresh herbs that you can get your hands on. Some olive oil or rapeseed oil also works really well. Some Parmesan cheese grated, some lemon juice, fresh garlic, pepper, salt to season. With the added option to add some nuts if you would like to the pesto, so you could add some pine nuts or any other nuts that you prefer, almonds, walnuts, pecans, which, whichever nuts you like. If you do have a nut allergy, then you don't have to add the nuts at all. You could add some breadcrumbs to the recipe. So it is really versatile and just mix and match with whatever you prefer. First and foremost, I will add my basil leaves chopped up I have removed the stalk from the basil for this pesto. However, I do put them to the side and keep them because these have still got loads of flavor and you can use them for another recipe. So don't discard them, keep them for something else. Along with the garlic clove and a large pinch of salt. This will all go in the pesto and mortar. When using the pesto and mortar to make the pesto, you do need to give it a bit of welly and make sure to crush the herbs, the salt and the garlic together until they make a smooth paste. Once I was happy that a smooth paste was formed, I chose to add in some pine nuts to the pestle and mortar. Taking time to ensure that all the pine nuts were crushed well through the mix. This is a complete personal preference and if you like a chunky pesto, then you don't need to crush the nuts until they are so smooth. I then transferred the mix into a larger bowl to allow me to add my lemon juice, olive oil, salt pepper and parmesan. I would recommend you to add in the ingredients gradually and taste as you go along to make sure that you have a pesto that suits your own palate. Remember that you don't have to use Parmesan cheese if you prefer not to. You could also use breadcrumbs for this part of the recipe. And there you have it, delicious herby pesto. Now for the first of our serving suggestions, which is delicious crusty bread smothered in the pesto and cooked in the oven for around 15 minutes. This could work really well as an appetizer or even for a light snack. There you have it, herby pesto crusty bread. The second serving suggestion is a delicious roasted courgette and pesto pasta. I simply cooked the pasta to the packet instructions, roasted some courgette for around 20 minutes with some oil, salt and pepper, then mixed these together with the delicious herby pesto. There you have it, roasted courgette and herby pesto pasta.